Adnan Abu Hasna is a media advisor at the UN Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees. He joins us now from Gaza. Mr. Hasna, thank you very much indeed for coming on to the program. How difficult is your agency's work right now? It's too difficult, actually, here in the Gaza Strip. As you know, after the bombardment of the Israeli strikes here and all over Gaza Strip, nearly 50,000 people displaced. You know, Palestinians, you know, entered our uh, schools and uh, now it's becoming a shelter for uh, for them. There are huge need, you know, for uh, for them to be provided and to support uh, them. Also, uh, the general uh, situation, we think that uh, Gaza is heading, you know, quickly towards a humanitarian catastrophe because of the, the lack of electricity, because of the destruction of uh, the sewage system, the pipelines, electricity lines, all aspects, uh, you know, uh, together. Even on uh, the last war in 2008, 2012, 2014, we did not see uh, the destruction of the infrastructure, the civilian infrastructure, in the roads of Gaza, of Gaza in, uh, in this way. Besides uh, also the huge number of people who were killed or injured severely or moderately, and uh, adding to that, uh, the corona spread in the Gaza Strip. Right now, the tested people in Gaza uh, related to the whole uh, test, it's about 40%. And what's going on now, the crowded on the shelters, the new shelters that we have opened to displaced people, it might also, you know, it might uh, uh, also lead to increase the number of infected people of uh, corona here. You raise so many issues, and I suppose you have to look at it short term and longer term. The infrastructure you're talking about, that rebuilding will take time. But in terms of your agency being able to help people right now, I mean, you've talked about the schools and we've seen the pictures in the schools how much are you yes. able to provide for the people and what more do you need? Yes, right now, you know, protection, first of all, protection. They are in UN institutions, UN UNRWA, in UNRWA schools. We have the flag of uh, the UN. We provided the Israeli uh, security system, the all the static, the places, GPS about this building. So uh, no one would claim later on in case of uh, shelling that we uh, we don't know. But when it's coming to the real needs of, of the people, actually, they need everything. They're just coming without anything. They left everything behind. They need water, food, mattresses, blankets, uh, you know, a PPE for uh, coronavirus, you know, for protection, uh, for everything, actually. But wh what we have done now, okay, we provided them with water. We lack of financial resources. Today, there will be, after half an hour from now, there will be a flash of bill from UNRWA calling the international community to help to support UNRWA because what we're seeing on the ground actually is a catastrophe. It's not only about displaced people who are in our schools. You are talking about people, also thousands of people who left their homes and now they are living with their relatives. They did not come to our schools. So we are talking about big, uh, we are talking about uh, a big numbers of displaced people. Adding to that, the gen generally, what is going on with the two million people by closing, uh, crossing point of uh, Karim Abu Salim, the only commercial crossing point between Gaza and the outside uh, world, it's closed uh, now. Uh, every day, young Gaza uh, entered Gaza nearly 600 trucks, but now. Nothing entered. Just yesterday, the Israelis they, they opened the crossing point of Karm Abu Salim for a few hours. We got, as UNRWA, we got few fuel, few trucks, you know, full of diesel. But uh, the trucks full of food were turned back because they told us because of security reasons they were kind of chilling here and there. At the same time, the Commissioner General of UNRWA, Mr. Philip Fazarini, since yesterday, waiting in Jerusalem waiting approval from the Israeli authority to enter Gaza. But now, right now, they did not approve his entrance. I wanted to ask you exactly about those two different issues, about how UNRWA is uh, communicating with the Israelis, the need to get 
assistance into Gaza and then those two crossings. So the one with Egypt was opened briefly and there were some trucks coming in. But then, as you say, the one that connects Gaza with Israel was opened for a very short time. There were some bombings of the Israelis decided to close it. Yeah. Where is the assistance going to come from if the Israelis are controlling that one entry point? Will the Egyptians allow more to come in from their side, do you think? You cannot compare what is coming from the Israeli side to what is coming from the Egyptian side. It's less than 10% or 5%. You know, it is the only commercial, Gaza depending on Karm al Salim crossing point. Israel is responsible as an occupying power right now according to the international law. This is according to UN uh, resolution and international law. Israel is still the occupying power here into Gaza Strip, not only around because they are controlling the sea, the borders, uh, the air. They are controlling uh, actually everything. If they did not, if they don't open Karim Abu Salim crossing point, I think we are heading towards a real catastrophe, the collapsing of the humanitarian system in Gaza. You will see it very soon because Gaza you know it's surviving day by day every day nearly six or seven hundred trucks you know loaded from all things all things food fuel uh, health supplies are coming on daily basis from the Israel side right now sorry right now right now we are talking about 10 days of closure and you will find out after four or five days that everyone here in Gaza will be screaming, shouting. We were feeling the re what does it mean closing Karim Abu Salim crossing point as a reality on the ground. Adnan Abu Hasna, thank you so much indeed for your time, sir. Appreciate it.